Worlds of sound that no one has ever heard before. A music that would not be tied to the past. Fixated on the idea of creating new sounds. To create the waveform of a sound and then find out what that sound sounds like. The music industry of the 1960s was just beginning to explore the genres popular today, but it lacked a few key pieces of knowledge and technology needed to truly get started. When Herbert Brunn came from Berlin to Urbana, Illinois, he brought with him sound and computer synthesis, advancing the scientific and everyday meaning of music beyond the acoustic styles of the early 20th century. My sense with Herbert was that his moving into electronic sound and moving into then computer computerized production of, of music had to do with the fact that now at this micro level you could not only assume the instrument and assume the sound but now you could um, take away those assumptions and just sort of create the sound at the tiniest atomic level a sound that had never been heard by a tuba or a bassoon or a flute Bringing computer synthesis from Europe to America, Herbert Brun's leadership in music innovation throughout the 1960s at the University of Illinois ushered in a new era of sound development through the university's electronic music studio, the Sawdust Project, and Brun's invention of expanded gestural computer synthesis. Brun's contributions to computer synthesis laid the foundations for the familiar swooshes and clicks that characterized the onset of digital sound. The University of Illinois invited Brunn to be in residence in the year 1962, prompting him to bring his family and immigrate to the USA from Germany, which, at the time, was being separated between the Bundesrepublik Deutschland and the Deutsche Demokratische Republik. Lajaren Hiller, who was the first composer who used computers to make his music, gave Brunn a teaching job in the music department of the university. The classes he taught there were mostly about composition, but when he became more well-known for his vision and technique with electronics, he started to teach computer music courses as well. A composer like Herbert who wants to know, like, what are people not doing? What are people not getting? What are people not understanding yet? Brunn also worked on the Computer Music Project at the Electronic Music Studio. This studio, home to some of the greatest electronic composers in the world, researched and carried out the most scientifically useful experiments that the musical world had ever seen. For example, under the leadership and vision of Herbert Brunn and his colleagues, the invention of expanded gestural computer synthesis, the translation of a gestural sound into the format of artistically composed electronic music, was used in the studio for many years by Herbert Brunn and his colleagues. He said there was a time period when the computer was just being constructed, and a lot of it was being done here at the University of Illinois, when people didn't even use the article the computer. They called it computer because they actually didn't know what it was going to look like. There was here at the University of Illinois, the initial computer was about a block long. It was a huge, huge thing. And people from all over, all departments, nobody knew how to use it. At first, the scientists and composers who took up residence in the studio had to wire together old, discarded pieces of radio equipment from the early 20th century to create a primitive synthesizer. But after the computer was in use in the 1960s, they could create sounds unique to the electronic world. The electronic music studio was soon considered one of the birthplaces of computer music. This caused a number of prizes to be awarded to Herbert Brunn for the part that he played in creating the new genre of music. These prizes included the Norbert Wiener Medal from the American Society for Cybernetics in 1993 and an honorary doctorate from the Goethe University Frankfurt, 1999, for his past work with the Electronic Music Studio. The Sawdust Project contributed greatly to Brunn's legacy and his progress in the sound and music industry. Sawdust was a computer program that could create waveforms developed at the university in the 1970s. The process of composing waveforms was very hard because most synthesizers can only manipulate sounds fed into an input-output machine. The project was meant to show electronic or computer music, 
had sounds that are unique to the specific machinery and did not have to start out as gestural sound. It also gives a number of different ways in which that waveform can change over time. These ways are called algorithms, which specifies the series of steps that determine the sequence of changes in a waveform. He also developed a process of composition that emphasized new ways of making music and that was not fixated on the idea of creating new sounds or new kinds of instruments. He actually proposed a way of uh, working with computers that allowed the compu composer to create everything from the smallest musical atom to the form and structure of the piece as the whole using a single set of processes and a single uh, approach. Sawdust achieved this, but it also showed the scientific world that it was possible to create a new sound out of other simpler noises. This process worked in a similar way to a chemical reaction. According to Herbert Brunn, sawdust allowed the user to mix waveforms and build them together using elements, links, and transformations, which were different forms of data that determined speed, volume, repetition, and pitch. Sawdust was Brunn's most widely appreciated work, according to the International Society of Bassists in 1997, and the musical work following it was known as the first composition which characterized an art form that would later become known as computer music. As a composer, he showed people in many different ways, and especially as a teacher, that um, you can make what you want to make, and it doesn't have to look like what you imagined it to be or what anybody else already knew, and certainly not what you already are comfortable with. Lastly, the invention of expanded gestural computer synthesis changed the sound of computer music because it allowed the composer to choose a sound that they liked in reality and manipulate it until it resembled something completely different. This was the beginning of small-scale computer synthesis, which turns a visual or sound into a different visual or sound instead of creating a new visual or sound. This invention came surprisingly from Herbert Brunn, who was always very supportive of creating new sounds that came solely from the electronic world instead of taking something familiar and changing it. It's been called in some places direct synthesis or direct waveform synthesis, and it has to do with a way of creating sound in which a composer doesn't necessarily know exactly what's going to come out. And the emphasis is not so much on creating what you already know you want, the emphasis is on creating something to see what it might sound like. With the innovation of expanded gestural computer synthesis, as well as the Sawdust Project and the Electronic Music Studio at the University of Illinois, Herbert Brunn popularized electronic music during a time of little progress. Brunn students at the University of Illinois and at the School for Designing a Society, like Jeff Glassman, Susan Parenti, and Mark Sullivan, went out to create compositions of their own and add their own styles to music into the mix of what Brunn left behind. These people continued to use, and even to develop, the computer synthesis technology originally derived from old pieces of radio equipment. Herbert Brunn gathered the materials and machines needed to create his work and put them to use, developing and introducing a very popular musical genre today. His work also contributed to the later popularized personal computer that used sound synthesis for all kinds of alerts, music, and even voice manipulating software developed in the early 21st century. Brunn created a lasting legacy of musical ideas and possibilities never seen before by finding sounds unique to computers instead of imitating live sound and gestural computer synthesis's ability to create a uniquely manipulatable electronic sound that could be presented as a text alert or as a documentary's narration.